happy Monday everyone holiday if you have it off it's Nancy Angel from Miranda real estate group and I'm here to share with you another tip that I have okay so I've been watching and I obviously share content related to real estate on my pages um, you know various pages TikTok, and Instagram um, LinkedIn and YouTube shorts etc and one of the things that I wanted to make sure that when you're listening to different creators um, and people on the internet with respect to real estate is to remember that real estate is hyper local, right? What does that mean? It means that the if the information, the data, the trends are going to be very specific to a very specific area. Um, and a lot of people may not have the same. There's for example, my area is upstate New York. I work in the capital region and there are pockets of areas where there are multiple offers over asking so many people um, out out um, looking for homes. But then there are other places where there's, there are distressed properties and properties are sitting on the market for a longer period of time. So it's really important that you look at um, your specific, like the area that you're looking for or the area that you live in, it's important that you really pay attention to that specific market versus listening to like what's on the news and the trends and the interest rates. Because the other thing is that interest rates may be lower in your in your area or for, uh, for your bank. Um, they may have incentives, promotions. Um, so it's really important that you make, keep in mind, I guess, that real estate is hyper local. It is it is very specific to a locality and I just don't want anybody to be skewing or, or you know making decisions based on information that's happening nationally an example of that is um, seller concessions and fees and asking sellers for fees you're not asking for anything if you're in a market where there are multiple offers you're giving the seller something they're not giving you anything that's not this market and unless that the house has been sitting on the market and you know there's something wrong with that house and, but if there are multiple offers you as a buyer are not asking for concessions you're not asking for credits for fees none of that stuff and I see people sharing things a lot on social media that say, oh, you could just ask the seller for a, a three, two, one buy down. You could, but you also know it's going to happen. I bet you won't get that house if there's another offer out there floating around. And chances are, because the inventory is so low, even if there aren't multiple offers at that time, someone can come in and make a better offer than yours and they can cancel your contract if you're within the attorney approval period. So that's just something to keep in mind. I don't, I think, I think sometimes it's misleading. Yeah, you can do all of these things and they're great, but not in a, a seller's market. And you have to know if where you're looking, if it's a seller's market, how are you going to know that you're going to look at closed sales, see how much those homes were listed for, and then see how much they got for them. So if they're getting over ask, you know that that's a competitive and hot market. See what's on the market. See how many days it's been on market. Anything that's been on, on the market a week and a half or so in, in hot markets, there's going to be some questions you need to ask yourself. So I just wanted to share that with you guys today. Um, there's a lot of things being shared on the internet and great tips, but it really depends on your situation, where you're looking. Location is the key. Um, as we know in real estate, in life too, but real estate, location is the key for real estate. And you really have to be looking at the specific area in which you're in. You want to know the average market price because if the average market price is less than what you have in your budget, you're going to need to make some concessions on things that you want. Um, average market price is going to be turnkey ready, um, you know, uh, mar turnkey market ready. It's going to have nicer finishes. It's going to be move in ready. Um, and that's what the average house is going to be in that price range. So if you're below that price range by a significant amount, you need to start ticking some things off of checking some things off of your list and really figure out how you can find a house that you can maybe make your own and do your own little upgrades and things like that. So you're not going to find if you're not shopping at the average market price, right? The average, say the average market price is 400, your budget's 300. Well, you know, off the top, you're going to have to make some concessions in your head. Um, 
in, in your in your list of things that you want and you know need and etc you're gonna need to look at that list again um, because the average market price turnkey ready, you're going to have to come up a hundred thousand to get all of those things. You know, this isn't really like what they show you on HGTV because that's a little misleading, I feel like, and is not realistic to what most markets are even doing or what the experience is of buying a home. Um, but I'm here to share with you the ins and outs of it, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So, um, I hope that that was helpful. If it was helpful, please give me a thumbs up, follow if you like this content and thank you so much for watching.